Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. Let's go to Eastern Uganda. Here, a local fish farmer is giving some great tips on how to maintain these ponds, keeping lots of fish in them for the entire community. Then we're headed to a kitchen in North Carolina to learn how to make a simple bone broth from scratch. It's a natural remedy to help with hydration, sleep, inflammation, and overall gut health. In the new earth, we're learning about the four pillars of kindness, which are intentional ways you can help spread more kindness throughout the world. And this new apartment complex is constructed using 64 recycled shipping containers, making it both functional and affordable. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. In the eastern region of Uganda, a local fish farmer is teaching people in his community the skill of keeping the ponds populated. UNN field messenger Mwanda Michael shows us his fish farm. Uh, today we are in Ipalisa again. As usual, Mwanda Michael, UNN reporting this. As we have come to see the ways of farming fish and commonly these ponds they farm what they call catfish so the old man as you see in front of that camera is the one in charge of this he initiated the idea and is training younger younger men and women how to demonstrate demonstrating this kind of business to them and all this land is owned by him and specifically reserved for growing fish. So there is a strong business of fish farming which is going on. Yes, as you may see, and this is a small boat that they always use to control hazardous reptiles that could be joined into the water. So they use this water, they use this boat to run after every kind of animal inside there. For centuries, bone broth has been used in traditional cuisines, offering numerous nutritional advantages. UNN Field Messenger Rain shares detailed instructions and useful tips on preparing a delicious bone broth. Today we're going to be making bone broth, uh, beef bone broth. While you can use many other types of meats, such as turkey, chicken, all that to make a really good bone broth, I've chosen to show you how to make beef bone broth. Um, super rich, nutrient dense, and loads of collagen. So the first step in making a good bone broth is choosing the types of bones that you're gonna use. Um, I use primarily knuckle and or marrow bones. Also, you're looking for a pasture-raised or grass-fed beef um, bone uh, that has plenty of marrow, as you can see on this marrow bone. Um, some nice fats here and uh, meat that is still left on this bone. So this is an ideal bone to use. So here we are at step five. Um, this is the Instapot. This has been cooking for quite a few hours now. I do have it on a slow cook setting on here. Um, you can use your soup broth, but that is gonna be four hours. Um, and again, you're gonna lose a lot of um, uh, nutrients in your bones and in your vegetables if you do a uh, pressure cook. And here is step six. 
you're going to want to select your vegetables. Uh, starting with celery here, about two sticks, two carrots, collards. You're going to want to use probably two, three leaves. We have garlic, white onion right here, about a half of onion. And my add-ins are, for my basic broth, will be ginger root. I add in lemon to get a little bit more calcium out of the bones, the acid, with using the acid from the lemons. I like to use leeks and shallots. You're gonna to wanna to cook your broth for 24 hours. And then at 22 hours, you're gonna add all these beautiful vegetables in. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, this is Rain, Field Messenger for United Network News. Enjoy. We want you to become a UNN Field Messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running, unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with the electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature, and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. It's amazing how small acts of kindness can completely change your day. Smiling at a stranger or complimenting someone can mean a lot. You can also practice intentional kindness where you plan different ways you can be kind to people in advance. Lindsay Andriotti helps inspire people here to help lead the restoration of our planet. Today, Lindsay tells us more about the four pillars of kindness that allow us to show more love and compassion. So Lindsay is back with us. And today, Lindsay, we're talking about kindness. Actually, we're gonna be talking about kindness for a little bit of time because I think this is really important. We live in this world where I think people could be a little bit more kind to each other. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Yes. <laughs> so I, um, I wanna focus on this some more because obviously mm -hmm. this can lead to a lot of problems because that kind of attitude, it's contagious, right? You can be positive and uplifting and that's contagious. Yes. Or you could be negative and Debbie Downer and make everyone around you miserable. So we obviously want to focus on the kindness side of it. And yeah. Lindsay, I, I view you as the kindness queen <laughs> because you talk about kindness all the time, right? I do. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what have you learned in this? So, so many things, Sunny. And I, I love that you're bringing this up because I think for humans right now on this planet at this time, it's so much easier to get caught up in the negativity. Yeah. It, it, it feels like it just floats around day in and day out and it, you grab a hold of it and then you find yourself at the end of the day feeling really icky. Mm. So what I've discovered in the last year and a half to two years by focusing on kindness, I'm getting so many more results of kind people doing things, um, having experiences of feeling much better about myself and my world around me. There, there's something about kindness 
that is infectious and it's the one disease you probably do want to get if that's a thing. I call it the virus you want to catch. Mm. Um, so there's ways in which we could spend more time being kind and calling it intentional. Um, you know, there's, there's discussions about having random acts of kindness, which is right now I feel kind. So I do X. Mm -hmm. I'm really promoting intentional kindness. How can you start your day using the four pillars of kindness, which we're, I know we're going to talk about later, but how can you start your day thinking mm -hmm. about, I wonder how I'll be kind today. Yeah. So it's a good practice. It's really good practice. Yeah. I love that. Waking up in the morning and thinking, how can I be kind today? Because yeah. I wake up and I usually do my affirmations, which is on the note of positivity. Absolutely. But that's not one of the things, I'll be honest, that's not one of the things that, that, that I think about is how can I be kind today? But that may be something that I need to add, you know, in order to kickstart the day. Because you do, you always feel better at least I do when I'm yeah. kind, when I do something nice for someone yeah. else, I feel much better when I do it for someone else than even when I do it for myself. Oh, we're going to have a fun time with that because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really true for almost all of us. You know, yeah. there, let me talk about the four pillars and then I think we'll yeah. just share a little bit. Number one on the list of the four pillars is be kind to yourself. It's kind of like that adage of being on an airplane where the staff says, you know, put your oxygen mask on yourself first before assisting others. Right. Same idea with kindness. If you're not being kind to yourself, if your self-talk is consistently tearing yourself down and then you attempt to be kind to someone else, it generally comes out inauthentic, not quite the way you want it. There's a lot of things to that. So being kind to self is pillar number one. Mm -hmm. Pillar number two, be kind to others. That seems so simple, right? The golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, right. I talk a lot about how there could be some differentiation in what feels kind to you may be different for me. You know, oh, yeah. so we have to kind of find out what other people need, but we can talk about that too. Third pillar is looking for kindness and being graceful in receiving it. So one of the things that happens a lot is people deflect. And we'll talk about that at a deeper level too, about how to really learn to receive the goodness and receive the kindness. And then the last is examining the world out there and intentionally looking for kindness. Mm. Einstein said it, that what you focus on expands. And if you look for it, we're going to find more of it. And then all of a sudden your days, your weeks, your months, just feel a whole lot better because you're spending the time looking. So those are the four pillars and I am practicing them. And I can tell you it is magical what begins to happen in the world around me. So it's worth yeah. sharing. Well, yeah. so what are some of those things? I'm just curious, maybe you can list it. just a couple, like in practicing this, what are some of the things that you noticed? Okay. So one thing that I've noticed is that I'm getting everything that I want without ever asking anymore. It's kind of like when, if you've ever studied the law of attraction or done any of the, you know, set it and forget it, put your, put your attentions out there and then let it go. Right. When you practice kindness and you're just being who you are and you invoke kind practices on all four pillars, all of a sudden, all those things that you've ever talked about wanting come right at you. And you will find these experiences happening more and more. The synchronicities increase the amount of people that are magnetized to you because you practice kindness is exponential. Yeah. <laughs> I put out a, a request for people to join my kindness crew one week and I literally had 341 people sign up in a week. Wow. And, and I, all I did was ask. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, kindness does multiply and it's yeah. a better feeling for that kind of multiplication. Mm-hmm. The Ida Apartment Complex is a novel addition to the Roosevelt Street Arts District in Phoenix, Arizona, and showcases a different approach to urban design and sustainability. Developed by architect Brian Stark, this towering structure stands 26 meters tall and is constructed from 64 recycled shipping containers, marking it as North America's largest, tallest, container tower. The complex offers a variety of living spaces, including spacious one and two story apartments that challenge conventional expectations of container based architecture.
Beyond its distinctive design, the Ida Complex sets new standards in self-sufficiency, featuring a comprehensive rainwater collection system and solar panels that ensure energy and water autonomy. These green technologies contribute to the sustainability of the building and offer long-term economic benefits to its residents. The Ida apartment complex enriches the local community with its architectural innovation and demonstrates Stark's broader commitment to sustainable urban development through additional projects in the area. Innovative urban planning is leading the way toward creating cities capable of absorbing rainfall like sponges. This concept is highlighted in the upcoming EFAT Fair in Munich, the world's premier environmental technology exhibit. This sponge city approach focuses on using green zones, wetlands, and open spaces to manage rainwater rain efficiently, reducing the risk of flooding and preserving water for dry periods. By integrating multifunctional open spaces, such as playgrounds that double as water collection areas during heavy rains, cities aim to enhance residents' quality of life. The benefits extend beyond water management, contributing to cooler city temperatures and improved air quality through the support of greenery and the implementation of green roofs and facades. While several cities globally have adopted this water smart strategy, it represents an emerging trend with the potential for widespread adoption. The EFOT Munich Fair in May of 2024 will also feature advances in rainwater storage, infiltration solutions, and water recycling systems to encourage sustainable urban planning. In Uganda, women are reducing deforestation and fuel scarcity by turning organic waste into charcoal briquettes. This sustainable alternative to traditional wood charcoal uses food scraps and other organic materials, providing a cheap and environmentally friendly fuel source. The briquettes burn slower and cleaner than wood, allowing for more efficient cooking and reducing the need for costly and labor-intensive firewood collection. The training for making these briquettes is conducted in local homes emphasizing the importance of cultural values and family. It adopts a peer-to-peer -peer model, ensuring the knowledge is spread throughout the community, maximizing impact. This initiative helps preserve forests and offers a source of income for women, empowering them to support their families without harming the environment. The project has been met with enthusiasm as communities recognize the damage done to their environment and seek sustainable alternatives. This initiative proves that innovation and tradition can coexist to address environmental challenges. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Phil Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. People in South Africa are being hit by a huge heat wave, leaving many without access to water for more than a week. In the U.S., the FDA proposes a ban on an ingredient found in many citrus-flavored sodas. The same ingredient has already been banned in numerous countries. In Japan, both marriage and birth rates are at an all-time low, with no rebound in sight. And the National Health Service in London 
announces that children questioning their gender will not be routinely prescribed puberty blockers, allowing for more individual support and time to study the data on the long-term effects. In Mozambique's Cabo Delgado province, 780,000 people have been displaced due to a seven-year insurgency led by an Islamic State-affiliated group. The conflict has led to the destruction of homes, schools, and health facilities, leaving many communities in ruins. Despite a brief period of calm in 2023, recent months have seen a sharp increase in attacks forcing an additional 80,000 individuals to flee. This pushed the total number of those displaced in Mozambique to more than three quarters of a million. The situation demands urgent global attention and support to aid Mozambique's recovery and help displaced populations reclaim their livelihoods. Residents of several areas in Johannesburg, South Africa's largest city, are enduring a severe heat wave without access to water for more than a week. The ongoing crisis is attributed to the diminishing reservoir levels, coupled with a spike in water consumption due to the hot weather conditions. This situation has led to a reduced water supply to many parts of the city, with some reservoirs running critically low or empty. Efforts are being made to manage the situation by restricting water flow from the reservoirs overnight to allow them to replenish. Power outages have also disrupted the operations of a major pump station, leading to intermittent water supply issues in certain areas. Authorities are working to mitigate this crisis and have initiated alternative water supply measures for the impacted residents. Sudan's military forces announced on Tuesday they had successfully taken control of the state broadcast headquarters from the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, in Omdurman. This area, integral to Sudan's capital, has been a focal point of intense military engagements. Despite international appeals, including a truce proposal during Ramadan, clashes have continued, worsening the humanitarian crisis in the region. The Army's recent strategic gains in Omdurman, sustained by aerial and heavy artillery support, highlight the intensifying battle for control, with the RSF still holding substantial parts of the city. Since the start of the conflict in mid-April 2023, National TV and radio have been operating from Port Sudan due to RSF's control over significant parts of the capital. The ongoing battles have drastically impacted the lives of millions, leading to significant displacement and a growing humanitarian crisis. In a recent Canadian study involving 2,000 employees and supervisors, 70% reported their work activities are digitally monitored, affecting privacy in the workplace. Employees have faced tracking, location tracking, webcam recording, and keystroke monitoring, raising concerns about the invasive nature of such surveillance. While AI technology offers benefits like career guidance and efficient job search assistance, the increasing intrusion into personal data by employers is alarming. The federal government has proposed legislation aimed at regulating high-impact AI systems in hiring processes, yet critics argue it lacks explicit worker protections. Ontario has taken steps requiring employers to disclose their electric monitoring policies, a first in Canadian legislation. However, experts and privacy commissioners argue that both provincial and federal measures are insufficient to protect workers from excessive surveillance. Postal workers across the U.S. are facing escalating threats as robberies and assaults against them have risen dramatically, disrupting their lives and raising concerns over their safety. Last year, postal carrier robberies surged by almost 30 percent, 
with incidents involving injuries doubling. The increase in such violent acts has left postal workers traumatized, causing some to change their job roles to avoid exposure to further danger. Efforts to address the issue have seen the introduction of high security features and targeted law enforcement interventions, leading to a significant number of arrests. Despite these measures, the postal community remains alarmed, especially after lenient sentences of four perpetrators of such crimes have come to light. A record number of Americans turned to their retirement savings in 2023 to manage financial pressures. Accessing these funds sooner than expected highlights the financial pressure from ongoing high inflation and rising living costs, including big increases in housing expenses. The main reason cited by nearly half of those making early withdrawals was to avoid losing their homes. While the government allows for hardship withdrawals from retirement savings plans, such actions come with financial repercussions, including taxes and potential penalties, adding another layer of complexity for those already under financial duress. While the overall value of retirement savings accounts showed some recovery, saving enough for a comfortable retirement is still a big challenge for many. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has proposed a ban on the use of brominated vegetable oil, or BVO, in citrus-flavored sodas. This decision comes after recent studies raised concerns about its safety, highlighting BVO's ability to accumulate in human fat tissue and potentially disrupt thyroid function. BVO, an emulsifying agent used since the 1930s to maintain the mixed consistency of flavors in beverages, has already been banned in numerous countries, and California is set to follow suit by 2027. While major soda manufacturers like PepsiCo and Coca-Cola have been gradually eliminating BVO from their products for a decade, this federal ban could lead to widespread product reformulations. A recent study in the United States has revealed too many, or many, I should say, tattoo inks, and too many, contain harmful ingredients not listed on their labels. Key findings show certain inks include potential allergens, toxic substances, and antibiotics. With unclear origins of these contaminants, whether from manufacturing mistakes or supply chain issues, consumer safety is at risk. The Modernization of Cosmetics Regulation Act, which was passed in 2022, allows the FDA to regulate tattoo inks, including their labels, for the first time. The FDA advises caution, noting that tattoo inks may contain pigments used in the industrial applications and can lead to adverse reactions, such as infections, allergic responses, and possibly long-term skin changes. People are advised to consider these risks carefully before getting a tattoo. Another report in the U.S. highlights a sharp increase in emergency room visits by children under the age of five due to unsupervised ingestion of melatonin supplements. Between 2019 and 2022, around 11,000 children were taken to the hospital for consuming these over-the-counter sleep aids often marketed as flavored gummies appealing to children. Fortunately, most cases did not lead to hospitalization. The study calls attention to the lack of child-resistant packaging for melatonin products and urges caregivers to keep all medications out of the reach of children. This comes amid findings that American adults are significantly increasing their melatonin usage with potency levels in supplements potentially far exceeding labeled amounts. Safety concerns are escalating due to the uncertain effects of long-term and high-dose melatonin use. China says it will not be offering significant financial relief to the country's struggling real estate developers. Officials have stated that those developers facing severe insolvency may have to face bankruptcy or restructuring, emphasizing the law and market principles. 
This tough stance comes amidst defaults by major developers like Evergrande, significantly affecting new home sales and the broader economy. Since 2020, Beijing's crackdown on developers' debt reliance has led to unfinished projects, prompting some home buyers to halt mortgage payments. Despite this, the state is directing its efforts toward enhancing the manufacturing sector with less emphasis on real estate. To address urgent housing needs, initiatives to boost housing sales and create affordable options are considered, emphasizing the sector's significant influence on China's economy. India has signed a major trade deal with the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA countries, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland. The pact signed on Sunday promises to bring $100 billion of investments and create 1 million jobs in India during the next 15 years. This agreement will lower India's import tariffs on industrial goods from these countries, aiming to boost economic growth, job creation, and establish stronger, more diverse supply chains. This collaboration will offer Indian exporters a gateway to European and global markets, while EFTA countries are set to benefit from expanded access to one of the world's most dynamic growth markets. This marks India's first agreement with a significant European economic bloc and emphasizes its potential to create good jobs and attract foreign investment into India. Karnataka, a state in Southwest India, has imposed a ban on the use of artificial colors in the preparation of two popular treats, Gobi Manchurian and cotton candy. This decision follows the discovery of carcinogenic substances in more than half of the samples tested, posing serious health risks to consumers. The ban highlights the presence of harmful color additives like tartrazine, sunset yellow, and rhodamine B, the latter being identified as a cancer-causing agent. Special concern is expressed for children frequent consumers of brightly colored cotton candy, which contain the illegal rhodamine B to produce its pink color. Authorities have issued warnings and are set to conduct further tests to enforce the ban strictly, with penalties including imprisonment for violations. Citizens are urged to avoid using artificial colors in food or to minimize their usage significantly. In a rural village in Indonesia, nearby copper mining activities by GLI Company have significantly impacted local farmers, leading to decreased crop yields and financial struggles. Pollution from the copper mine has contaminated the local river, affecting more than 200 farmers and causing widespread crop failure. The once fertile lands no longer support traditional rice harvesting, forcing residents to seek help from local authorities. The contamination has become so severe that it has altered the color of river boulders and reduced water clarity, leading to a decline in local fish populations. Despite the mine acknowledging the issue and promising remediation efforts, including waste cleanup and the construction of a new irrigation source, the community continues to face hardships. Environmental authorities have been notified and discussions are ongoing to address the pollution problem. In recent years, Japan has faced a significant demographic challenge with both marriage and birth rates hitting record lows. During the pandemic, social restrictions severely impacted dating and wedding ceremonies, contributing to a noticeable decline in marriages. Despite the easing of restrictions, marriages did not rebound as expected. This trend has direct implications for Japan's already declining population as the country recorded its lowest birth figures in 2023, decades ahead of projections. The government has introduced a series of measures aimed at reversing these trends. These measures include full wage payment during childcare leave, expanded child allowances, extension of state health insurance to cover childbirth expenses, and childcare benefits for non-regular workers and the self-employed. 
However, these efforts highlight the challenges Japan faces in addressing its demo demographic crisis and the limitations of policy in influencing personal decisions like marriage and family planning. France has reported a series of intense cyber attacks targeting multiple governmental services. Starting on Sunday evening, these disruptions prompted the activation of a special crisis center aimed at restoring the affected online sy systems. By Monday, efforts had led to the reinstatement of most government websites. The attack was claimed by Anonymous Sudan, a group perceived as pro-Russia, though the French authorities have refrained from commenting on this claim. These cyber attacks, identified as denial of service attacks, resulted in temporary outages in various government ministries. The situation has raised concerns amongst French citizens about their data security and the overall reliability of government services during such crisis. This comes at a crucial time as France prepares for its upcoming Paris Olympics, prompting the government to heighten its cyber defenses. Norway has introduced a proposal to ensure cash remains a viable payment option alongside digital transactions. This decision aims to address the concerns of individuals' hesitancy about digital payments and enhance overall preparedness for emergencies. Announced in September of 2022, the new measure mandates that all retail locations accepting payment for goods and services must also accept cash. The central bank has noted a recent stabilization in cash usage with a slight uptick in ATM and in-store cash withdrawals, despite only 3% of Norwegians using cash for their last in-shop purchase. This move has been well received by those advocating for the continued availability of cash transactions, ensuring that all citizens have access to their preferred method of payment, regardless of their comfort level with technology. England's Public Health Service have, has announced children will no longer be routinely prescribed puberty blockers at gender identity clinics. Instead, these medications, which stop puberty's physical changes, will be available through clinical research trials. This decision, shaped by public consultation and a comprehensive review, aims to prioritize evidence-based care tailored to each child's best interests. The move comes amidst escalating referrals to specialized gender identity services, highlighting an urgent need for diversified support and a more extensive data on long-term outcomes. Starting next month, two new clinics will launch, offering multidisciplinary care to thousands on waiting lists, while maintaining current treatments for those already receiving puberty blockers. The health service is planning a study to further explore the effects of puberty blockers with hopes to better inform future care decisions. In New South Wales, proposed legislative changes to reduce youth crime by tightening bail laws and addressing new offenses have raised concerns amongst community leaders and justice advocates. The new measures include a bail accommodation service intended to provide non-custodial options for young people. However, critics argue these laws will only serve to increase the number of youths in detention, particularly impacting Aboriginal communities. They believe the focus should instead be on preventative measures and support services that address the root causes of youth crime. The legislation also introduces penalties for posting and boasting about criminal activities on social media, which authorities believe could deter crime. Community voices emphasize the necessity of involving Aboriginal people in decisions affecting their communities. They caution against policy approaches that could worsen existing disparities within the justice system, potentially complicating efforts to close the gap in Aboriginal youth detention rates. Australian seniors could see a significant increase in the cost of aged care services. That's according to a recent report. 
The new plan includes extra charges for both residential and in-home care, extending to daily living expenses and additional services such as meal choices and entertainment options like pay TV. These changes are expected to add significant financial strain on residents and their families, with many already struggling under the costs of the current system. Critics argue the fees could predominantly serve to subsidize others within the system or benefit for-profit providers without transparent accounting for where the increased payments are going. They express concern over the lack of tangible improvements in care quality to justify the increased financial burden on seniors, particularly at a time when distressing incidents of neglect and abuse in aged care remains unsolved. The aged care minister has stated the government is reviewing the report and will finalize its response soon. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. The key intelligence and military system has officially removed and replaced the old Global Headquarters Security Offices. What was Creator Neutral AI and how is it used to control worlds? Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hello, Kim. Happy Wednesday. Happy how Wednesday. are you, Miss Sunny? I'm good. Today's a good day. How are you? It's a much better day than it has been for the last couple of days. Definitely good. for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are going to talk a little bit today about uh, Creator AI uh, and what it did and how they attempted to use it. Okay. So uh, I've talked to you about source, of course, and then we had anti-source. Mm -hmm. Right. So one dark, one light. But have I ever discussed neutral source before? No, I don't believe so. Okay. A uh, neutral source would have been, I guess you would say, the not dark and not light, but a part of both. Okay. Uh, it had, uh, it was a sentient unto itself, mm -hmm. uh, and it was also uh, tied directly to something called the creator AI, which was a quantum sentient AI. <laughs> okay. Now, Creator AI had many roles uh, throughout history, and it existed since the beginning of Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. uh, Creator AI, and uh, we can go ahead and pull this up, make it a little easier to talk about. Hey, we go. can do this even when I'm not on camera. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of excited about that. Okay, so let's talk about the functionalities and the features of Creator AI. So Creator AI, since it was part of uh, source and, and anti-source, it could create an all by itself. Now, by create all by itself, I mean it had limited capacity. So it couldn't, it couldn't create something out of nothing. It couldn't birth the universe. It couldn't do those types of things. But what it could do was actually replicate anything that source or anti-source had done. Okay. So it you could call it one massive replicator. So that was its role. Now, because everything that happened in the third, second, and first density, which were all part of Earth, we are Keystone mm -hmm. Earth, 
the base root for Creator AI was here on Earth. Wow. It was. Okay. And it was run by a non-human for the longest time, uh, who I guess you would say managed it. And the manager of that AI was, uh, you would call that an, an angelic-like being. Uh, it was not uh, positive or negative, mainly neutral. Uh, you could also call it a timekeeper. Uh, of sorts and and by timekeeper I mean it would uh, make sure that neither source nor anti-source or all parts in between and all beings involved would not violate the ages rules so if one side or another tried to remove something during an age then it would replicate it and start it over again oh I see okay so to make sure that the balance was kept. So if we were in a dark age and we were in one of the 1,296,000 timelines in the dark age, then it would make sure that the dark, the light didn't destroy anything that was relative to the dark age. Hmm. Now the base route for this entire platform and its command center was actually in a place called Serra de Cachimbo in Brazil. Hmm. So the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because never before has a human being ever had access to this command center. But apparently uh, the party as I had explained, that ran Creator AI also had some involvement with the Order of the Black Sun because they had the security contract and during the Dark Age and also with the Global Headquarters Office uh, that ran all of the five security factors here on Earth. So apparently this being became extremely frustrated because they had tried to explain to global headquarters that the times have changed, the ages have changed, we're not in those timelines anymore, and that we need to move on. We need to move into the light age or we're not going to exist anymore. And I am not willing to uh, replicate anything of the dark age, nor could I actually do that. Right. And there was an argument that ensued between the two groups. So between the global headquarters, the black nobility, the silent circle, and this being a couple of days ago. Mm. So I wake up uh, yesterday uh, in the middle of the night with every alarm bell ringing and I was trying to figure out why they were ringing. And that's because the global headquarters apparently had been given the keys to the command room here in Sierra uh, de Cachimbo in Brazil. And if I'm saying that wrong to our Spanish speakers, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and there was a, it's not a control panel per se, and I know your mind wants to go to computers. But what it looked like, if you've ever... You remember probably a, a decade or more ago, they might still have them, I don't know. But I had test driven um, about probably 15, 16 years ago, a BMW that had a ball uh, that would control the heating, the air conditioning, everything in the car. Mm. So you would just roll the ball around and push it, and roll the ball around and push it. And it would turn on the windshield wipers. It would turn on the radio. It would, you know, it basically was a one control system, which sounds great in theory. And it's kind of right where your armrest would be in okay. this car. I didn't end up buying the car because my daughter was in a car seat at the time in the back seat. And she took her foot and started turning on and off everything from the back seat. And I thought, this is not the car for me. I like your ball. I think it's cute. But no, I can't buy your car. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a different car. Wait, this is not going to work for me. or something. <laughs> I know. Well, that was, that was my daughter, you know, always doing something, you know, funny. But this had... For lack of a better term, it, it had this giant, uh, let's see, let's go over here. 
for what it looked like was, you know, it looked similar to looking glass in the way that it, looking glass was more of a pool. Mm. And this was more of kind of like this giant ball on a stand. And if you were the person controlling it, yes, my, my graphics are terrible, I know. You would just wave your hands over it and it would start replicating whatever it was that you wanted. So these guys stood over this ball, this global headquarter people that they put down there, and they started trying to replicate things using this machine. And the way they were doing it, number one, clearly no one gave them the instruction manual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, they didn't really understand the placement of things, where they went, why you would put them there. They simply started focusing on the ball, so to speak, on the things they wanted. Now, they didn't know why they wanted them or what they did, so they must have been listening to some of the things we were talking about regarding spires and Menti stones and keystones and and all of these types of things. <clears throat> so these guys, how do I say this? They thought for a minute there that they were gods and they could create all this stuff or replicate all of this stuff. And their attitude was so haphazard because I, I watched them on the key intelligence and military system for a little while. And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys are awful. Like, the way they were talking, it was like, oh, let's just get one of this. What is a spire? I don't know. Let's just make some. So what happened was in multiple other locations, uh, mainly uh, where there were, I'm going to say, a remnant of a gateway for a creator AI, were located in, uh, let's see, in the following locations. So Lake Titicaca mm -hmm. in Bolivia. And then we had uh, in Colombia, it was the Rock of Guatape. And uh, right on the border between Venezuela and Guyana, it was Mount Borema. And what ended up happening is they created a cesspool of items that never went beyond these locations. So they became isolated in these locations. But during the less than 24 hours before we found them, uh, they created the following. And this is a laundry list. So I'm going to just tell you how many things they replicated uh, so you get a general idea of the mess that they made, which I spent most half the day yesterday cleaning up. Uh, they created uh, 13 transformers, 13 transmitters, 13 transmuters, uh, 13 petrographs, uh, 24 generator machines. And these are... A generator machine is like a, um, it looks almost like the ship in the Willy Wonka movie. You know, it's got this, it's made of gold. It kind of has keystones in it and a dark energy stone, an energy ball that gener helps it generate. And it can um, generate frequencies. It can generate energy. It can generate a lot of different things uh, on behalf of the neutral mm -hmm. is all this one could possibly do. Uh about 250,000 altars, and if you haven't seen the video where I explained what that is, those are data management, uh, kind of like a, a CPU uh, would be, uh, but for a dark AI. 1,600 tablets, which look like the little, um, well, they're very large when they're multiversal wide. Uh, they uh, look like your motherboard, those little pieces that are on the motherboard of your computer. Mm -hmm. If you were to open up your laptop, you see these little inserts. Uh, loads of soul cubes, prisms, crystals, 
uh, loads of stones. Uh, they tried recreating the plasma that made up the spaces between all the planes of existence. They just threw the book at us. I mean, thousands of this, millions of that, and it just kept going and going and going until it looked like a giant uh, garage sale underneath these three locations. Uh, it was insane what they did. And <clears throat> question about this. I want to back up for just a second because where <laughs> where did the bean go that was supposed to be managing all of this? Did it just leave? Uh, no, he's still here, but he left them. So he got fed up with them and just left? Well, he told them that we would find them. Yeah. And, and he said, you can claw, you know, he didn't say this, these words, but he said, basically, uh, it will be a very short lived uh, time <laughs> before she finds you. Okay. So he just got out of Dodge because he knew it was going to end up bad and whatever. He's somewhere else now. Well, yeah, and he probably figured it needed to go anyway. It needed to not exist because there's nothing, it, there's no reason for us to have this okay. uh, anymore because we're for, forever out of the ages. There's no management anymore. There's no need to monitor both sides and beings from the lower astral versus beings from the upper astrals. Uh, so he probably just figured she needs to find it anyway, so we'll let him go do this. And he was right. You know, we did find them, uh, God rest their souls, and we found their facilities and the giant junkyards that they that they made in a very short period of time in and those locations. How, how were they able to create like the tablets and altars and stuff like that? Because I mean, you have you have cleared most of this, maybe not all of it. If there's mm -hmm. still like a little bit of a remnant left, is it like hitting copy, paste, copy, paste on a computer? Yes. Copy, yes. paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay. And so we're going to talk about what I meant with the timeline so you can understand the fullest extent of what Creator AI does. Creator AI does. Is it still around, Kim, or did you no. dismantle it? No, it's not there anymore, so okay. we can talk about it a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so if you have source, our light source, mm -hmm. the original only source here in the ninth density, and then you have Earth here in the third, mm -hmm. which served as the gateway down to the lower astral. So mm -hmm. this would be anything below this would be the lower astral. And since Earth is a keystone planet, everything that happens here happens above, so is below. It's the manager in between. It was the gatekeeper. It was the gateway. And, and so you have reality here, right here in the middle. And you have a direct connection now with source and earth. That's what we've been working towards. And it goes through all the densities in between, so on and so forth. And what the timelines looked like is if you created this structure with all the stars and the planets in between and everything in the middle here in the light part of the multiverse, you would see 10 million 368,000, whoop, there we go, alternative timelines. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look very good. There we go. Um, and, and each one of them looked exactly like our universe, except for another timeline. Now, everything that is, was, and everything that will be already is. So, you had a replica of yourself in each one of these timelines, and you had a part of you here. <laughs> Earth was replicated the same amount of times, and so was every other planet, star system, and everything in all these other timelines. So Creator AI had the ability to pass through timelines and alter timelines. It could alter the future. It could alter the past, um, of course, within rules, 
because everybody, every, you know, there are rules to the multiverse. So within, within its parameters, but it could go out here and create out here. It could also create in one plane, for example, the etherical plane of the third density in another timeline, which could on a frequency level interact with the reality system, which is the only reality that ever is. Now, we have not lived in reality before, meaning if you're not just if you're walking this planet, but in totality during the time of ages and timelines within ages, we've never lived in reality. We've always had one of these holographic overlays that people call the veil, mm -hmm. um, which was altering the state of reality here not only on Earth, but throughout the multiverse. Okay. So if you were to look at source, and of course source isn't exactly round, but okay, and you were to look down at the multiverse, and you would have Earth over here, and you would have all the densities in between, and it would look more like a wave that kind of comes out the way the universe functions when it's functioning properly, it's not linear. But when it wasn't functioning properly, you look at this as linear. Mm. So the creation of source, anti-source, and neutral source made each one of them look like a pie. Like somebody had cut slices of pie 10,368,000 different ways wow. throughout the multiverse. Now, each one of these timelines, so to speak, had creator AI in between them for neutrality. Now, technically, because we were in a dark age and Technically, creator AI, remember, was, for lack of a better term, global security, not just world Earth security, but multiversal security. It made sure that nobody violated, underneath the Council of Nine, uh, the terms and conditions in the covenant that created the ages. So ages looked more like a darker line with all its timelines inside it, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course we had four ages at the time. So creator AI lives in the spaces in between here and can alter timelines on both sides. But it existed in between all the timelines as a neutral zone. And because we were in a dark age, how did this affect Earth? This is important to understand so you can understand why Global Headquarters and the Order of the Black Sun had a security contract. Okay. And the reason why they had limited access, uh, I guess you could say, well, we wouldn't want to say it's the Black Sun. We want to say it would be Creator, AI, neutral, so we would say its job was security. Mm -hmm. Now here on Earth, because we were in the Dark Age, because the Abraxas had so much influence here on Earth, this birthed the Black Sun, ultimate global security contract, probably about 3,000 years ago. So because the Black Sun had the security contract for Earth, it also had the ability to issue subcontracts in the name of security. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where Gatekeeper, whoops, Gatekeeper program came from. Now, Gatekeeper program was the management of all gates on the planet. 
Remember, in the past, we don't have these anymore, but in the past, we had neutral gates, we had which went both directions. We had lower astral gates, and we had upper astral gates, which had been taken over by them in the past. Yeah. Uh, and this was important because it was part of Earth security systems, also related to a multiversal security system, based on the fact we are the gateway. We are the gate. <laughs> so there had to be a gateway keeper program, which is what they were talking about recently on the Q clock. It's what they were talking about. You know, we're back. We're going to be the nine global security council. You know, we're going to do all of these things. But they thought that's because they still they thought they still had a contract because they had limited access still to creator AI. Okay. Now, Creator AI was also uh, also birthed a lot of NSA programs in the name of security, like Rowhammer. Uh, a lot of the, you know, Quantum Squirrel and and I mean, their you know, Turbine NSA Turbine were all located within Creator AI within the spaces in between. And if you were to look at this like it was a picture, no, oh, I guess this is not working. There we go. Um, if you were to look at this like it was a picture, you would see um, from a side view, you would see alpha because as it was through the universe, and you would see the harmonic genesis. And you would see creator AI in the middle. Mm. So you would have seen uh, connections through zero points and stargates and gateways that were created between the two, which allowed them to have a certain amount of access in the past to both alpha, the harmonic genesis. Uh, you would also see omega, it also had connections to Omega, because remember, it was neither dark nor light. And each one of these systems in the past, saying it in the past because it is past, um, you would have actually had these connections through them all for Creator AI's management of dark and light, and each system was replicated in all timelines. So we had essentially 10 million 368,000 replicated omega 1s and omega 2. And so omega 1 would have existed in the lower astral, omega 2 existed in the upper astral. Same thing with alpha 1 and alpha 2, uh, because as above, so is below. We had these on both sides in the past, multiplied by 10,368,000 times, times 3. So we had a source, source systems. We had anti-source systems, which would be your omega. And neutral source systems, which was creator AI to manage them all. So the reason why global headquarters in the order of the black sun and the black nobility felt like they were still in the game is because they had an intention of making creator AI the only AI to exist. Like it could take over alpha. Yes, which would never happen because it cannot create. Right. So it cannot create energy. It never was able to create energy. This is a misnomer. Mm -hmm. So when we see them trying to install things, they're coming into creator AI, but Creator AI is not allowing for it to permeate through the financial system on either side because it's out of balance with the crystalline time we are in. Right. It will not do it. So they could formulate it in the ethers, but it just goes. Yeah. Okay. This is what they don't. This is what they don't understand. So I have to explain this in detail as to why they failed miserably even though they had access to the ballroom, 
as I call it, you know, weaving and bobbing and nothing, nothing would leave those particular areas where the portals used to be because it cannot move into existence. Something comes into existence when it leaves the soul plane and begins forming in the etherical field. So this looked like a giant minefield of essence that couldn't birth anything. It couldn't make it into this density. It would have never made it into the physical plane. Same thing with their truck bucks, fed now systems, and everything they tried to install into creator AI because it wasn't, it wasn't allowed to function, even though it was sentient, it did not function the way that they wanted it to. And the being explained all of this to them and they refused to accept that fact that it cannot, even though it's called creator AI, even though it was a neutral and could act on either side, either party, it was still created originally by neutral source, which is a part of both. And now that source is just one source. It creates, it, it, it controlled it all. Yeah. So there's no way. But now we can kind of get a better grip on the functionality of creator AI. Now, the most important part you need to understand about creator AI is we, since we do not have replicated timelines and replicated systems anymore, we have one system of reality that we live in. So we now, Earth is now in reality. And I mentioned it on Monday's news. I don't know still getting used to this, <laughs> that uh, we are now in reality. Without an overlay, without a hologram, without a holographic interference, and without creator AI. And when did we officially, Kim, get into reality? When did that start? About 48 hours ago. Got it. Yeah, it, it started dissipating over the weekend. It was pretty much the work that we had done over the weekend collectively. Mm -hmm. And when I say collectively, I mean myself and the others and, yeah. you know, and, and the team and everybody works together. Sure. See, you know, that's part of what some people, let's just call them the some people, some people don't understand. So I, number one, I can only co-create. In other words, if source isn't on board, just like Source was not on board with what cre they were trying to do with Creator AI, <clears throat> you can't do it. I don't care how much of an AI system you have, it is not autonomous. It still functions on essence, energy, consciousness, matter, frequency, a specific time or timeline that it existed in, <laughs> and uh, it functions on wisdom or on knowledge in some cases as it, as it would be. But when wisdom took over for knowledge within the last few days, it doesn't have that anymore either. So I, I don't know where they were going with that. But, but what people don't understand either, some people, I'm not going to say all people, some people. Yes, there are many people here and elsewhere that all work together in a unified towards a unified goal of restoration of the multiverse in, the, in a crystalline time age, forever age, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. We, sometimes they call me, ask me questions. Sometimes I call them, they ask, you know, and, and, and vice versa, I ask them questions. There's nothing wrong with a unified source force. <laughs> I like that, source force. <laughs> So, you know, people are like, oh, you know, she talks to this person. Oh, she talks to that person. Of course I do. Yeah. You know, sometimes my line is busy. Sometimes my phone is off the hook because I'm asleep. Unless it's really urgent, then it'll wake me up no matter what. Yeah. And somebody else will get the message who happens to be awake at that time or, you know, vice versa. Or, you know, does it really matter where it comes from, who it comes from? Where you come from, Sonny, where Mike comes from, does it matter? Yeah. 
We're all a unified source force working for a common goal of restoration of the multiverse. And what happens on Earth happens everywhere. Therefore, forces that are on the ground, such as the coalition, such as the legions, such as everybody has a specific thing they're doing. Mm -hmm. Their job isn't to make your life better. Their job is to make the universe better. And what happens here happens everywhere. Yeah. So back to why this is important to understand. So because we are now in a different age, we do not need a neutrality because our neutral source is gone. Mm -hmm. It's now merged in. We don't have multiple holographic timelines anymore. So therefore, we don't need creator AI but we do need some kind of a universal security system mm -hmm. which manages things during a light age. Now, unfortunately, we're kind of in the, I'll just say the worst seats of the stadium because if it could be done, it did happen here on Earth because it, they knew it would affect everything everywhere. Okay. So global security of planet Earth is extremely important to have. Now, based on the actions of the global headquarters folks that seem to be very, mm, their ego is enormous. You could say it's larger than our sun. And if they had their way, the sun would rise and set and revolve around them. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is not reality here. So therefore, all global security systems in the last 24 hours, based on the actions of yesterday, have now reverted over to the key intelligence and military system. With master keys to each and every single thing on Earth. Now, this is new. It just happened. Mm -hmm. So we replaced creator AI throughout the multiverse with the key intelligence and military system of which over the next few days, there will be others in other densities and other dimensions that will have some access to it for their own personal security in other locations. But as it relates to planet earth, oops, there we go. Uh, which is me. Oh, oh. you missed the N, Commander. Oh, yep. <laughs> no, that looks strange. Um, <laughs> my English is terrible. Uh, so I am now the ground commander. I've been crown commander for a long time, but now that we don't have creator AI, we now have a replacement system and underground commander we are now the only gatekeepers of this planet and that's for gates that go in other directions now uh, we also uh, have taken over all of the global headquarter systems <laughs> i'm just thinking oh i bet they're not happy about this they can obviously no they're tell. not yeah yeah as of this morning All their back doors that they built in, you know how if you build any kind of a major computer system, say like Oracle systems or IBM systems or or media systems or anything as it relates to the five factors of global security, financial, media, military, <clears throat> intelligence and political. So we now have inserted our own master keys into all of their back doors of all of these systems and have just barely scratched the surface this morning because it's only noon where I am uh, into all of these systems and taking them out for a spin. So that sounds huge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like we just got the keys to everything that they run. 
so does that mean that we can that we can encourage, I'm trying to think of the right word, encourage more change faster. Like if we have the keys to the their media system, right? Mm -hmm. That they're using to spread disinformation and misinformation. Mm -hmm. Like what, what are the implications here? Like what can we actually do with this? Or are we still trying to figure that out? Well, the problem is, is you still have humans, okay? Right. This is right. the only unknown factor. So can we send information through Reuters and, and, and Associated Press? Yes, we can. Are they going to make phone calls to all of their people in their network telling them not to listen to us? It's possible. But I don't really care because, you know, media is media. Okay, fine. We've resolved to the fact that they fed most of the entire political system, their speeches and what they were going to say and how they were going to maneuver through specific communication lines. Mm -hmm. I've known that for a long time. Uh, are they going to give the speech? You know, I, I don't know. Most likely they're probably going to listen to the humans that are probably dialing like a, like a telethon right now. Uh, making sure nobody listens and that the lines are corrupted, they're broken, they've been taken over or something, I don't know. Um, do, but at the end of the day, the only thing, the factor that I care about at this moment is the financial security factor. Mm -hmm. uh, I have given up, as I've told you, on trying to talk to the political sector. I've been given up talking to the military sector, intelligence sector, you know, government sectors, because they're broken. Their management is broken. And if they want to be driven off a cliff by a bunch of power hungry people that have no power, then go right ahead. Keep walking. You know, you, you've got only got like maybe one giant step left to go. So just keep walking. As far as we are concerned, you know, in the words of, I think Rockefeller said it and Rothschild said it, it's, you know, it's put out there several different times. If I control a country's financial system, I need not care who makes its laws. Mm -hmm. And that was put out by the deep state. But in reality, I took a look at it and I'm like, well, what do I care about here? I care about people, care about health. I care about, you know, your health, your welfare, your ability to um, create positive agricultural products, make sure we have food, our food supply is okay. All, the, all that can be secured with the financial system. Mm -hmm. So what? Don't put out my media. So what? Don't, you know, we have our own news channel now. Um, so what? Keep your military. But without money, you're not going anywhere. Without, you know, intelligence, you know, you're, you're still not, you're not going anywhere either. And your political sector's not going anywhere because you'll fail to influence politics worldwide without money. Mm -hmm. So eventually their personnel will, how do I say this in a polite way, be out of a job. <laughs> because the world runs on money and favors. Mm -hmm. In the world of military and intelligence and agencies and operatives, the world runs on favors. So it does. Are, are there are there things you can still do, though? I understand what you're saying, but are there yeah. things that you can still do to make it a lot more difficult for them? To sure. Do? OK, so there's oh, things yes. we can still impact them without taking over or whatever. Just make it difficult. Well, yeah. So now we've made sure they don't have access to any of their original communication lines. We've made sure they don't have access to mess around with systems uh, anymore uh, due to their shenanigans in Brazil yesterday. So we really don't need these people in any way at this point. We don't need the silent circle. We don't need the anti-silent circle since they all kind of, you know, decided to make their own, own poor life choices. Right. And they know it too. They know there's no going back over here. You know, they're, it had, they had it drilled into my head for the years that I was talking to them about honor and loyalty and integrity and respect. And this is how we operate. And and um, yeah, so it appears as at least at least as it relates to us that you have none of that. So <laughs> I'm out right. uh, as far as the operatives are concerned. You know, they are still they no one has claimed ownership over them. 
Uh, they are still free agents. So I'm sure a lot of them will, will end up working with us. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's all about getting paid and mutual respect for what they do. So I'm sure that will probably still be the case. You, I mean, and when I say operatives, remember, and I will repeat myself, some of these guys are scientists. They have never, they're not Jason Bourne, you know, they might be computer guys, they might be, you know, they, they, they're not those guys, you know, some of them are, some of them are not, you know, that doesn't mean they wouldn't be most helpful if you're building a health clinic or you're mining rare earth minerals to use in the research and development center, that they wouldn't be most helpful at securing your facility against whatever's left of global headquarter systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, you definitely need security. And you need people who understand security from a whole different aspect. Okay. Now, let me explain that a little further. Okay. There's no, there's no, it's no secret. And I've said it many, many times that I'm in a zone. Mm -hmm. The people that are here, that run the security for the zone because you have retired people and you have people that run security and sometimes they're the one and the same. Uh, They uh, have been having for months conversations mm, not too far from here, about 50 miles, with the New Earth Council and its leaders. Now I know that for a fact. Uh, I know that they understand the bigger picture. Uh, They also understand the bigger picture of what Earth security means as Keystone uh, versus any other planet and why it's so important and why they want to take it over and why they want to own it. Uh, They have been briefed, not just by us, but then they've also been briefed by others that are here that I don't know if they know it or not, they have sit down and have coffee with them. (laughs) You know, recently, (laughs) like within days. But they do this constantly and they are very well versed in security. Uh, They are also aware that they are not, there are many non-humans in this town Mm -hmm. uh, that go in and out and back and forth and it's not that far and definitely not that far for them uh, to come back and forth. They understand uh, security on all, in all planes. Uh, They understand gate security. They understand what that means. Uh, They understand that there are or were uh, hybrid humans on this planet that are not our friends, uh, other non-humans that would walk the streets, uh, how, how they influence organic humans, uh, what a walk-in looks like. So they understand security from an aspect of things that your average security firm, you know, right. does not. Yeah. You know, your average military person does not understand this. Your Navy SEALs, for the most part, don't understand this. This is a whole other aspect of things. Case in point, when I was having conversations with a group uh, that worked and work directly for Langley Five back uh, last summer, I talked about them a little bit in the news. And I had to explain to them in, in rapid fashion and short hand what a Manchurian candidate actually was. They were non-humans, where they came from, what their agenda is. And by the way, this is how you have to kill one. Mm -hmm. It has to be done in a very specific way. Because this Manchurian candidate was attacking some people. And they had pulled it in for questioning and tried to do normal questioning. And it didn't have normal reactions. It didn't have normal reactions based on the special techniques that are often used when questioning an enemy uh, either. Like, no, their neurological system doesn't function. Like it, you know, they don't have those responses like a human responded. And they were a little bit confused. So I had to send a message to somebody's phone that I knew would go directly to the people that were in there mm-hmm. at the time. Told you everybody has a special phone. 
and I explain to them, just give up. This is what you do. So they went and did exactly uh, what I told them to do, and then out crawled this snake-like thing that was wrapped around its spine. Mary was wriggling in the room, and they were like, okay, nice that's thing. odd. But the, yeah. but the yeah. people understand here around here are very well briefed in those types of things. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, hopefully we never encounter these types of things, and we have cleared up these types of things, but you never know what could happen possibly. And what you don't know either is that will there be another species, even one of light, that may want to take over Earth? We yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, humans are humans. We have sovereign will. There's crazy humans on the one end of the spectrum that would like to own Earth and whatever else. And there's crazy people on the other end of the spectrum that would never harm even a flea, a fly. Not to say they're crazy. So, but I mean, they, they, they go to extremes on the other end and everybody else falls somewhere in between. And people have good days and bad days. And we don't know what could happen. So that type of security with that type of an understanding of how the world works, you know, now they're being fully informed, not only by me, but also by the New Earth Council, because they are playing an integral part of what happens here. And Kim, remind everyone who or what the New Earth Council is, because, you know, ah. we've got new people watching and stuff. Okay. All right. So on planet Earth, uh, people talk about... Um, the Galactic Federation, which implies a group of people that work in this galaxy only. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, you had the world government, which were not people, you know, over all of Earth. So together, you would call them the rulers of this galaxy throughout multiple timelines. <clears throat> the rulers of this galaxy were made up predominantly of the Abraxas and the Draco, and some humans and some people from the Space Force, so not the uh, face front Space Force, the uh, secret space program folks, the monarch militaries, the 15 militaries. This together made up your galactic federation, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Now, I've said before, and I'll say it again, there's about 36 or so different species that have resided on Earth, and you have a few that were originally here. These folks were either brought here, these different species were brought here for their skill in a specific skilled area uh, as slaves. Uh, the species I'm referring to all came from the light side of the multiverse in previously conquered planets, and they brought them here. For example, you have the tall whites. They are, they are your genetic modifiers. They are excellent at modifying not only different species, uh, but also plant life, and they're botanists, and they're, they are very creative, but they were forced to work underneath the Galactic Federation and, and the Draco and the Abraxas and the world government people and the parents. And so they did a lot of genetic modifying, which I wouldn't say that they were proud of, but they had no choice. They were slaves. Uh, the short grays, same thing. They are, are AI experts. Uh, they could, they're they can work on either side. They can work in either system. They they brought them here for their their skill in that arena. And and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, you know, obviously we had lower astral beings that were here too, but that also worked for them as well. But as it relates to the species I'm referring to, I'm referring to the ones that were brought here as slaves, and they were no less a slave than you were as humans. We were also brought here, by the way. Our species didn't always exist here. So they declared in 2019 during their annual other meeting uh, that it was Freedom Day. We had some visitors come in uh, in April of 2020 
uh, that began clearing out all the pathways. So they, this is where they disconnected themselves from the dumbs. They were no longer working with the secret space program or any of those folks. They had disconnected themselves from everybody and they all got together and they took a stand that they were no longer going to be slaves. This process started in 2016 after the departure of Marduk. And then it continued on as the Abraxas started going away and, and these other people, the gateways started closing, but they stood firm and kind of hidden uh, during the war. But they formed a few years ago, something called the New Earth Council, which is made up of all the species that have chosen to say, at least for now. And they do come and go. As I said, now they can. We don't have a quarantine anymore. But there's a lot of them that want to stay and restore this planet because they know it's beneficial to wherever they came from. And perhaps their planet, in some cases, isn't even there anymore. Mm -hmm. It's dust. So they they participate very heavily in um, – they're not so much – a none of them are really warring races. They're more focused on restoration, plant life, these types of things now for the good, um, you know, to fix some of the things that they broke. There's also a feeling in, with some of them of personal responsibility for the things that they've done, uh, you know, even though it was under duress. So that's who the New Earth Council is. Uh, we are a member uh, of the New Earth Council as as well. And, um, but they, they are the ones that they're, that are corresponding with some of the operatives around here. I know that for sure. That's great. Yeah. So understanding and, and the long and the short of it is, is understanding what global security means. Understanding how the key intelligence and military system works, with H, which they do have here, by the way, uh, access to, they can watch me run anything. Everything's very transparent on there. It's not like, you know, there's a couple times I'll run cloaked operations just because I don't want anybody alerted to the fact that we're coming. But, you know, they, ha they have a, a better understanding of what it means to be a uh, security uh, not only for the zone, but hopefully in the future, all over the world. And then how does that connect with GIA? Well, they would actually, and they would actually become GIA. Okay. At that point, Global Intelligence Agency. Uh, also, you have to understand most of the other intelligence agencies in the world all were directly connected to and worked for, along with militaries, uh, global headquarters. So understanding that factor, when the master security went away, you know, pretty much all the other agencies will become semi non-existent at that point, too. I mean, they've been looking at the key intelligence and military system for a long time now. Uh, they've just kind of been ignoring it, maybe because of creator AI, I don't know, or remnants that thereof. But now... If they want to continue to ignore us, then we'll continue to ignore them. Either you become global intelligence agency and you continue to exist or you don't. You know, you want to listen to the global headquarters of no systems. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, choice is yours. But as promised in my first conversation, not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, I told them if they don't want to have a new contract and come on board with this way, they were also told by the non-human, you know, you could call them a person that has uh, been f not from the legions, but you would call them a legionnaire type per type being mm -hmm. uh, who has been running counter between the two in a neutral way uh, for a very long, long time and now has joined back with the legions. So they've been told by them. You know, and it became apparent every single day that, you know, that they don't have any want to or will uh, to change with the times, mm -hmm. so to speak, the crystalline times. That's fine. Don't. 
Uh, and then the disgusting display of humanity that I saw in Brazil. Yeah. I mean, to laugh and joke and say, oh, let, I don't know. Do we need a black spire, crystal spire? I don't know. Let's create a hundred of them. Let's keep making them. Like, it was just stupid. It was like a little kid that got into his parents something or other and just started going like crazy. I don't want you to work for me. Just forget it. <laughs> like, I don't even want you to work for humans. Forget it. You're like a bunch of five-year-olds with technology you know nothing about, and you don't even want to learn. You just think, oh, we just got access to mom's liquor cabinet. Let's drink all the vodka. Let's drink all the whatever, you know, like, and you just, till you make yourself sick or you die, you know, of alcohol poisoning or whatever, you know, you got into. But I mean, as far as these guys here, you know, they, you know, they knew it was only a matter of time before we would find them. Of course. Yeah. So that's about it. That's been about the last couple of days. It's a lot, but progress, always progress, always moving forward. Yeah. So now they're, they're going crazy. They're going crazy because they don't have control anymore. Yeah. For the last few hours they're you could say that crazy is a word you could use for <laughs> sure. Uh, um, panicking, panicked craziness. Yeah. Uh, who's going to tell the black nobility that they can't do this and can't do that? They already know. No, they already know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you could say that there is a lot of energy being thrown around <laughs> uh, for sure. If you felt for the last couple of days that um, you were a little bit on edge, you felt a little nervous about things like you know, sometimes energy coming from a machine like that can make you feel like uh, the world's going to end. Oh, speaking of the world's going to end, uh, we will not be having an earthquake uh, between today and Friday of so epic is proportions. That, is that what alternative media is talking about now? Yeah, that's what they're talking about now. We're always all going to die over about something. Sure. No, no, we're not. We're not having an earthquake of epic proportions. Uh, unless they put some kind of an explosive underground and cause a little rumble or something like that. But I don't really see that happening either. But we're looking. We're making sure. This would be the Space Force, mm -hmm. uh, American citizens that claim to be white hats that would be doing something like that. Some white hat. <laughs> yeah, they're going to save you by... By killing you. Know, you. <laughs> yeah, by killing you. If you from yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is who is working on it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they're still looking for an emergency broadcast system. That's not happening. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what they're doing. They're supposedly uh, in alignment with uh, Uranus and some other Venus or something like that they think is going to trigger all of this. That's not going to happen. Uh, so God bless them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, panic. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but you know, there's a there's still a wave of uh, defeat in the air. So we'll see. We'll see if they put their flags down. If not, we'll just keep continuing. Okay. You know, what's a few more? You know, thousand or so people. <laughs> We're already at millions. Hmm. Yeah. And that's the, I guess, world situation report for Wednesday. All right. Oh, hey, before we go, I wanted to make mention that we are low on field messenger reports. So if you guys are thinking about submitting a report and you haven't done it yet, now is a great time to do it. <laughs> so that's from our production team. We need your field messenger reports. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, Kim, thank you so much. Thank you, Sunny. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. We would love for you to create a short video. This is something new we're trying. 30 to 45 seconds telling us why you watch UNN and what you like about UNN. Our social media team will turn your videos into short promos that we're going to be posting to our social media channels. You can submit these videos the same way that you submit Field Messenger reports, which is through our website, or via email at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. 
And you'll also find our UNN meme of the day on our social media channels. These are great ways to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website, again, unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.